Now, come on, Dan. Yes. Oh, well, that's right. Dan, you are let's have it. Yes, yes come on. You still haven't told us what you're doing here. A three-month sabbatical. Oh, yes. Yes. The man talks the way he writes. Paradoxes. <laughs> well, to call it a vacation would seem excessive, I mean. But what are you really here for? Another book in the offing? As sensational as the last. <laughs> Look, I told you I felt like a rest, that's rest? all. Katie hadn't seen Europe, so no, it seems oh, like a good idea. Where is that delicious thought of yours, oh, anyway? Yes. Upstairs, uh, sleeping. She hasn't caught up with jet lag yet. Well, you certainly have. Three days. Already, you look as if you've been living here all your life. <laughs> well, you can thank Parsons and Disney for that. Mm. They've really been looking after things. Thank you, sir. Now, come oh. on, Dan. What kind of book is it? Yeah. Okay, okay, so I do have a subject in mind. Now, oh, it's oh, early oh, days oh, yet. I hope it's better than the last. Eh? Better? Oh, well, it's fascinating, of course. Uh, I couldn't put it down, but the subject was horrendous. Witchcraft, necrophilia. Oh, <laughs> don't be so revolting. I suspect cannibalism. Oh, All right. Oh, here comes Katie. Oh, he's doing it. That's fine. What do you think? This is something. I'm not surprised your daughter walks in her sleep, has nightmares, with you as a father, Dan. Well, she's done it since she was a kid. Ever since she got a glimpse of your first manuscript, right? <laughs> well, it doesn't happen very often, only if she's overtired and excited. I, I guess the trip here. Mm. Good night, Dan. Good night, Harry. She'll be all right now, won't she? Sure. Write his new pin in the morning. Good night, Dan. Good night, Louise. Thanks. Marvelous dinner, Dan. Marvelous evening. I'll uh, give you a call about that, Peter. I'll look forward to it. Yeah. Good night, Dan. Good to see you again. And you. Good night. Will you be in touch again soon, Dan? Sure will. <laughs> There's an awful lot of stairs to fall down, Dan. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Excuse me. 
should have got yourself a tiger instead. Hmm? Instead of a daughter. The gate. Oh, that. I like people, Katie. Your kind of people. It's just a precaution. None of us want you to end up with a broken leg, do we? Well, I, I probably won't do it again. I'm so rested. Oh. Hey, now that's not for publication. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Dad, you don't really believe those things can happen these days, do you? I mean, black magic and wizardry. Katie, I don't invent them. And there are stranger things. Yes, me running around in the night. <laughs> well, I won't do it again. Sure.
Are you okay? I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I guess so. I rang my bell. Well, didn't you hear me ring my bell? You just stepped out as though you were sleepwalking. I was not walking in my sleep. Oh, of course not. You should have swerved. Well, I tried. And what about that? Oh, that. Well, they uh, only put that there to tempt me. Uh, well, I guess I was far away. No, I should have looked where I was going. Are you sure you're all right? It's a technique I ought to try and perfect. Oh, knock girls over so I can pick them up. Oh. <laughs> Do you live near here? Yeah, over there. Oh, I'll walk with you. My name's Barnstable, by the way. Barnstable? That's the name of a town, isn't it? Yeah, they stole it from me. Oh. <laughs> How long have you been over here? Only about three or four days. And how long are you staying? Three months, I think. Oh, good. Are you, um, are you on holiday or something? Not exactly. My father's a writer, and he's working on a book here. Well, what sort of stuff does he write? All kinds of things. Morning, Esme. Morning, sir. Dad? Dad, this is Barnstable, my father. Pleased to oh. meet you. Hello. Barnstable, that's the name of a town in this country, isn't it? Oh. They stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to know you. Uh, do sit down. Oh, thank you. But how come? How did you two meet up, anyway? Oh, we sort of uh, bumped into each other this morning. This morning? You must have been up early. Didn't you sleep well? Oh, of course I slept. Perfectly. It was just such a nice day, I wanted to go for a walk. Sure, sure. Of course, baby. Uh, Barnstable's a student, Dad. He's interested in psychiatry. Well, you're on a winner there. The world gets a little madder every day. <laughs> <laughs> do we see you for lunch? Right. Are you, um, are you all right, Pip? Sure, Dad, why? I just thought you looked a little washed out, that's all. No, no, I'm fine. Go away. He's right, you know. You do look a little pale. I'll be fine once I've adjusted. I just haven't been sleeping too well, that's ah, all. Ah, guilty conscience. What? Well, that's my theory. Sleep is the barometer of the state of mind, just as the pulse is to the heart. You store up anxieties during the day, and then at night they come flooding back into your subconscious. I wrote a paper on it, Night and the Nightmare. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Night and the
Just a dream. Just a bad dream. <laughs> this is what I like best about London. The feeling of a past. A solid foundation. It's nice to know the world doesn't change too rapidly. You're different today. Another bad night. I had a nightmare, yes. What about? I don't remember. Been reading too many of your dad's books. And what does that mean? Well, I mean, he does delve into the weirdest areas. You know he's a Pulitzer Prize winner. Of course I know. I mean, I'm not criticizing his writing, just the subjects he tackles. He doesn't invent those subjects, you know. They're part of us. They're real. No, no, you're misunderstanding me. I just meant to suggest that maybe, well, what, you being so sensitive and him writing that kind of stuff. Stop. Stop. You are in a state. I am not in a state. I want to go home. Daddy? Katie, did you have a good day? Katie! What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing? And don't you tell me nothing, young lady. Your face is as black as thunder. You didn't have a good day. Oh, I had a marvelous day. And how about you? Did you type out a few more pearls of wisdom about man's degradations? Did you examine the evil part of his soul more closely? Katie! Excuse me, sir. The dinner party tonight, sir. If I might discuss the final arrangements. I'll leave it entirely to you, Parsons. Uh, in your good hands, and I'm sure it'll be a while. Now, the evocation of black arts and spirits isn't to be recommended, though, Dan. I'm not evoking them. I'm just studying them. Something terrible will happen to you. Oh, like what? You could get your old sinus trouble back. <laughs> Why'd you do it anyway? I just want to understand, to explain the inexplicable. Sure, why not? I don't believe this mumbo-jumbo anyway. But black magic? Oh, it'll make one hell of a book, Dan. Hell is right. If he gets to finish it. I'm impervious to the supernatural. Giddy. Giddy. You're looking tired, sweetheart. Wouldn't you like to go to bed? Bed? No, no, I'm not tired. I'm wide awake. Wide, wide awake. I may never go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't have your stamina, Katie. If you'll excuse me, Dan. Uh, sure, sure. I, I should be going, too. So, so should you, shouldn't you? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I've got an important appointment tomorrow. Well, I'll see you up. Another marvelous evening, Dan. That's two I owe you. Yep. No, that's not so counting it. This isn't anything to do with her mother, is it? Oh, she's been dead for five years now. She's put that well behind her. It's, it's just that she's... Highly strong. Well, if it does turn out to be anything else, Dan, I know the address of a very good psychiatrist. I won't need any of your addresses, Peter. But thanks. It may not work with you, Kitty. Too much brandy keeps me awake, but it may not work with you. I don't need to be kept awake. I just wanted a drink, that's all. Oh, come on. Don't lie to me. I don't like you lying to me. Oh, Dad. Am I going mad, do you think? Is there something wrong with me? Not a thing. You've just inherited from me. Too bright an imagination and too active, much too active, when you really should be getting some beauty sleep. Oh, I wish I could. But these dreams... And I've been walking again. Yes, I know. Oh, no, no, I haven't seen you. I've been too bushed for that, but I know the signs. Every night I've been walking. Do you know where? No. Well, at least the new gates work. We haven't found you lying in the hallway yet. Yet. Now, look, don't worry. It's the, the new trip of new life, lots to see, new friends. Oh, and that reminds me, that um, Barnstable guy, he looks like a nice boy. Yes, he is. 
He's really nice. Oh, yeah. Get him to take you to a disco or something. Dance the legs off you. Then you'll sleep. Tell him that's a direct parental order. Dad, I do love you. You look better. Funny again tonight. Funny? Ah, Miss Summers. Funny. You know, odd. I think I heard her walking about again last night. I don't think Up we should down. discuss our employers like this, Esme. Look, just between you and me. Come on. They're nice people, generous people, than Americans usually are. He's a weirdo. A what? Mr. Summers, a weirdo. He writes our books. Esme. Two of them have been banned. Did you know that? I did not know, nor do I wish to know. As far as I'm concerned, he's a very nice man. And a weirdo. Esme, I really will not have you talking this way. Nor do I like you having men friends call for you at the house. Oh, for pity's sake. We're not in the 1800s now, you know.
Eddie? Katie! Katie! Told you, weirdos, both of them. She fell down the stairs last night. Well, those stairs are steep. Oh, it wasn't that. She walks in her sleep. That's why the gate was put there. Walks in her sleep. Oh, she was stoned. Now I feel even more like a caged animal. You're not caged. It'll be open all during the day and only locked at night. How are you feeling? Bruised. Mm, don't doubt it. Luckily, you didn't break anything, but the doctor thinks you ought to rest up for a while. No, 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 I'm fine now. Whatever you say, but I still think you ought to take it easy. At least until this sleep walking dies down. It isn't just the walking. It's the dreams, too. So vivid and scary. Well, I'll give you a rundown on them later. That's what I'm researching at the moment. Dreams and the occult. You're not ready. Today, remember, I said I'd show you the sights. Oh, yes, okay, but later. I want to talk to you. What about? The state of my mind. The state of her mind? That's what she said. She said about herself. Told you, Parsons. Weirdos. Look, I've only just got into psychiatry, but you are certainly not mentally disturbed. Well, I'd stake my reputation on it. Well, my future reputation. It's probably as your father said. Overexcitement, a new home, jet lag. But I've walked before, ever since I was a kid. And I've had dreams before, but well, never like this. Never these kinds of dreams. Dreams are like the mind perspiring. They can also be very indicative as to what's bothering you. Now, if you could recall them. Oh, but I can. Totally. Almost totally. Well, all right. Try me. I'll see if I can give you an interpretation. Well, they come in a kind of sequence. I'm in a big, tall room, high up on some sort of structure. It runs along one wall and stairs lead down. A gallery? Yes, that's it, a gallery. And down below, there's this old man. He has a Bible, and he's going through some kind of weird religious ceremony. What? Yeah, he kisses his fingers and places them on the Bible. And he's saying something. And what's he saying? Something about being rich and hiding his riches. And then there's a knife in his back. He's dying. And there's this young man. What young man? I don't know. He's, he's very handsome and dark. And he's wearing some kind of costume. Nineteenth century, I think like a Regency buck. I'm terribly sorry, miss. It just slipped. I hope it wasn't too valuable. Oh, I don't know what came with the house. Never mind, as me accidents happen. What does this young man do? Huh? Well, a 19th century young man. Well, first, he just stands there. And then... Look, I don't believe in psychic phenomena. I, I don't believe in it at all. Do you understand? It's, it's unscientific, but... Well, but what? Well... Maybe you are hypersensitive to atmosphere. And this house certainly has atmosphere. Maybe your mind is like a radio station picking up long-forgotten signals. Do you mean the old man might have lived here once? No, I didn't say that, but there could have been associations. Yes, look, we'll try and find out. Well, how? Well, a house as old as this, there are bound to be records somewhere. Look, here. Look, you go and get dressed, and I'll see if I can find some here. Yes, sir? Oh, Parsons, uh, isn't it about time we had some lunch? I'm about to serve it, sir. As soon as I can get the dining room table clear. There's a reference here. New windows were added in 1881. Put it down. 
Hey, what goes on? Oh, morning, Mr. Summers. We're doing an instant history of this house. History? Did you know that it once belonged to Sir John Poyne? Yeah, he was a cavalier. He fought against Cromwell. Cromwell? I didn't think this place was that old. The original structure is. Some of it's still standing. Of course, it's been added and annexed a lot since then. They used to hide political prisoners here. There even used to be a secret passage leading through to the priest's house that backed onto this. Well, it all sounds very, very fascinating, but not very good for the stomach. Stomach? Lunch. Oh, <laughs> we can finish later. I'm sorry, Dad. I've lost my watch somewhere. I had no idea of the time. I'm the giddy one, 19th century dreams. Ah, oh, we've been through all that. I know. I'm a radio picking up antique signals. The signal I'm sending you is probably the oldest one in the world. Are you picking it up? I'd like to do this forever. Swing higher and higher, free as a bird. Katie. Do you think this is a tiring activity? Do you think it'll make me sleep? That's the rub, isn't it, Barnstable? Aye, that's the rub, according to Hamlet. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. Katie. Uh, did you find anything that linked up? Oh. No, no, not really. There was no incident that even remotely resembled my dream. Well, at least he kept you occupied, and I'm grateful to him for that. <sighs> good night, sweetheart. Try and get a good sound sleep. Hmm. door open, sir, and... well... Yes, well, thank you, Esme. It's kind of you to take the trouble, Esme. Well, we don't want her falling down the stairs again, do we, sir? 
Next time she might get killed. Yes, well, thank you, Wesme. Eddie, uh, I'm going to go and see Peter today. I think I told you that he wants to do that British paperback. Uh -huh. The trouble is that he, he lives so far away. Well, you could stay overnight, can't you? Well, I could, yes, but... Uh... Dad, are you worried about leaving me? <laughs> Don't be silly, I'll be fine. Anyway, it isn't as though I'll be completely alone, as me and Parsons are here. No, Parsons has got the day off. He, he won't be here. But, but you're right uh, about Esme. Uh, she'll be here. Well, look, you can't do that trip in one day. Now go on and enjoy yourself. Yes, but... I absolutely insist. Okay, thanks. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I'll pack your razor, toothbrush, pajamas. Thanks. Esme, uh... uh... Don't worry, Mr. Summers. I'll take good care of her. You have a good time, sir. Katie! Katie, I'm leaving now. Goodbye, Dad. Give my love to Peter. Will do. See you tomorrow. If you need me, the number's on the pad. Bye-bye, sir. I just want to find my watch. I had it the other day. I know I had it. Now, well, maybe some coffee later, Esme. Yes, miss. and stand. Gee, that'd be a great gift for Dad. Well, I could find it for you cheaper down the Portobello Road. Just look at that box. Oh, that's a vinaigrette. A what? About, uh, 1760 BP. BP? Before plumbing. Ah! Oh. You put some scents on a pad, put it in the vinaigrette, and then held it so. Well, that way you could just about get through the stench of the streets. Oh! Do you like that picture? Where? There. Full of life, bright as a daisy. The next... You saw something, didn't you? No. I thought you saw something. Look, why would you tell me? What is it? You're afraid you're starting to see things? I'm afraid you... I saw nothing! Nothing! hot milk. I'm feeling tired and I'd like to capitalize on it. Certainly, miss. teaspoonful of honey. My mum always recommended honey. Miss Summers?
Mr. Summers' residence. Darling! You darling, I told you not to call me. What? No, I can't read tonight. I'm supposed to be taken care of her. Darling, I can't. Suppose she wakes up. Oh, all right. We'll have to be quick. <laughs> See you in about five minutes. Sorry, I got you up. I didn't think... It's still pretty early, you see, and the lights were on downstairs. I didn't know I'd get anybody up. I need a phone. Well, my car's broken down just up the street, and the phone box is out of order. You do have a phone. to talk to you and get to know you a bit first, but I can't go through with it. I have to tell you. You recognize me, don't you? I'm out of your dream, your nightmare. I know. You see, I've been dreaming about you. My first idea was the best one, to break it to you gently, but I just had to tell you. I know you so well, but I don't know your name. K Katie. Katie. And I'm Ian. And I'm in this big room, and you're somewhere high, watching. And there's an old man with a knife in his back, and he's dying. Careful. I told you, I'm Ian, and I'm flesh and blood, I'm real, see? Do you mean you've been dreaming about me? Yes. Every night for about a week or so now. Dreaming and walking. You sleepwalk too? Yes, I'm afraid so, ever since I was a kid. But never like this. No, not me either. First I thought I'd made you up. But you've got to be so real, so real. And then I saw this, in a magazine. Well, I thought I'd pay you a visit. And as soon as you looked at me, I knew you recognized me. I knew you'd been dreaming the same dream. But why, I mean, why us? And why do we keep having this dream? I thought you might be able to tell me. Well, where do we go from here? I don't know. I thought of telling some friends, but... Oh, they'd only laugh. Right. Well, there must be some explanation. I hope so. I certainly hope so. I'm sorry, miss. I heard voices, and I thought... Oh, oh that's all right, Esme. Uh, this is Ian. Uh, I'm an old friend. I see. Is there anything you want, miss? 
No, no, no. You can go to bed now, Esme. Thank you, miss. Good night. To bed and sweet dreams. Well, there must be something we can do. Well, first thing is to compare notes, put our dreams together, see how they match up. There might be a clue there. A clue to what? Well, I don't know, but it's a start in the right direction, don't you think? How does yours begin? Well, I'm walking. Where? Upstairs. The attic room. about being rich going through that weird religious ceremony and then there's a knife in his back he's he's dying Katie look look I don't want to go through with this well, you have to we both have to or we'll never have any peace it's our only chance Katie okay so now you're in here and then you're in the big room but how how do you get into the big room I'm not sure right up to it and then I'm in the big room. Oh, but that's not possible. None of this is possible, is it? There's no back to it. What? See for yourself, there's no back to it. This is where my dream starts, down there. That's where you first saw me, isn't it? Come on. Katie, come on, this is real. It's solid and real, no dream. our dreams. No, no, I've actually been here. Look, my watch. Well, yes, and why not? You walk in your sleep. You somehow stumble through that secret door into here. And saw a man murdered. No. That's where the reality stops and the dream takes over. Well, look, see for yourself, there are no dead bodies here, are there? And these certainly aren't 19th century. But someone certainly does live here. locked from the outside too so whoever does live here is away at the moment you saw the old man about here right and he toyed with the Bible Yes. and he said something about being rich you saw something like that about a hidden fortune then what did he say I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Come on, you've had enough. We'll go back the way we came.
keep this a secret, hmm? For the time being. Well, what are we going to do? Nothing. Nothing more tonight, anyway. It's late and you must be tired. But we've made some progress. We know the room does exist and how you got into it. That's real progress. But we broke into someone else's house. We didn't break in. Anyway, there was no one there and we didn't take anything. Let's just leave it at that, huh? But, uh... Look, I don't want to broadcast this till I'm sure what it's all about. I'm not exactly crazy about being laughed at. We'll call it a night, and tomorrow I'll make some inquiries. Inquiries? We'll find out who owns the house, who lives in that room. Well, how will that help? I don't know, but it's certainly a good start. I feel a lot better anyway. I might even sleep tonight. How about you? Well, it helps. Knowing some of it helps. And, Katie, let's just keep it between ourselves, huh? After all, it is our dream. I'll contact you sometime tomorrow. Good night. Ian, we know how I got into the room, but you. I know. That's what's bothering me. Good night. I thought you'd be home by now. Well, that's why I'm calling, sweetheart. Rome wasn't built in a day. And I'm beginning to think Peter was the architect. You're going to have to stay on? Well, if it's okay with you, there, there are really a lot of things still to be sorted out. Of course it's okay. You, you're sure? How was last night? Last night? Did you sleep well? Oh, yes. And no dreams, no walking. <laughs> Told you. Just give it a few days. Okay, sweetheart. I have to go now. Uh, I'll see you as soon as I can. Bye now. Bye bye. It's Mr. Barstable, miss. Have him come in. Come in. Hello. Hello. You know, I really am beginning to have my suspicions about you. I think you're some kind of food gigolo. You always turn up when there's a meal around. Oh, that's a yen for that old home cooking. Oh. You seem more cheerful today. I am. And I'm sorry about yesterday. Oh, forget it. Start again, shall we? Okay. Good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Now, that's interesting. Because yesterday you were still very tense and then suddenly gone. What happened? I switched it off. Oh, that's even more interesting. You're lying. And I tell you what, you're not very good at it. If I told you the truth, you wouldn't believe me. Well, I'd like the opportunity to try. Apparently, you excelled yourself last night, Esme. Miss Summers told me. You held the fort very well. Well, it wasn't under attack from Indians, you know. No, but you took care. Good care. That's excellent. Responsible. You're going to have tomorrow night off. As a reward. As a right, you mean. I keep telling you, Parsons, this isn't the 1800s. All right, all right. Just thought you'd be pleased, that's all. Be able to see that boyfriend of yours. I suppose you've still got that boyfriend. Yes. Is he still working for that silly restaurant, prancing about oh, back Oh, mind your own damn business. It's ridiculous. I don't believe it. You have to believe it. We're two people sharing the same dream, two strangers. It isn't all dream, either. That room exists. If it is true... It is. If it is true, then you are to make psychic history, and I'm about to give up studying psychiatry and take to the black arts. I knew you'd laugh at me. Well, it's a nervous reaction. I'm, I'm not for a mental loop. Now, this Ian, I mean, who is he? Where does he live? Well, I didn't ask. But he promised to contact me again today. How? By phone? Or is that too mundane for him? Maybe he'll just doze off, climb into your dreams and... Stop it! I'm sorry, but you've got to admit, it's a bit wild, isn't it? It happened. All right. A secret door, you say? Those records said there was one, and there is. Leading through to the house that backs onto this. Yeah, I know the house. I've never actually been inside it, but I know it. And I know who lives there. Oh, Pearson. He's an eccentric, a, a recluse. Some say that he's a pauper, others that he's as rich as Croesus. Nobody knows. 
Old person? Yeah, he's, he's 70. Small, stunted, hasn't bought himself a new set of clothes in years. He, he looks like something out of Dickens. Yes, I know. He's the old man in your dream, isn't he? Well, when you described him before, I didn't make the connection, but now. A recluse? Well, he isn't home now. The house is locked up. Yeah, that's possible. Sometimes you see him for months on end walking down the road to collect his paper. Then you don't see him for weeks. He just takes off somewhere. Well, nobody knows where or why. But the rumor is he goes to count his money in a Swiss bank. The room exists. And the old man, old Pearson. He's away now. But when he returns... Barnstable, I'm scared. Why? Well, I think I'm seeing into the future. When I dream, I'm seeing into the future. And when old Pearson does return, he's going to be murdered. I'm going to talk to my professor about it. Don't worry, I won't mention any names. I'll just put it to him as a hypothetical problem. He's used to problems. I'll be in touch. Take care. Good day, sir. Cheerio. Sight, miss. Gosh, is it that late? Esme, would you run a bath for me? Yes, miss. Going out? Just for a while. Boyfriend meeting you, is he? Is he going to pick you up in his sedan chair? <laughs> See you later, then. Mr. Summers' residence. Who? Speaking. It's for me. Yes, she's just this minute left. Who's this speaking, please? Oh. Oh, I see. Well, yes, I, I'm not one to gossip, but uh, I'll do my best. Excuse me, miss. Is it just one for dinner tonight, miss? I guess so. My father hasn't called yet? No, miss. I heard the phone just now. For me, miss. Nobody's called for me? No, miss. Just one, then. Found out about the old man. So did I. He's a hermit, an eccentric, and he's the man out of my dream. How did you know? Well, it doesn't matter. What are we going to do? We're going to go back up there, and we're going to recreate the whole dream. Every second of it. The whole nightmare. Where it started, isn't it? Come on. He was sitting here, right? And he spoke about riches, a fortune. 
What did he say? Well, I don't completely recall. You have to. His exact words, what he did, is important. Something like, I'm rich, no one suspects. A fortune no one will ever find. What else? Nothing else. And then he went through that weird ceremony, kissing his yes, fingers. Yes, you told me that, but he must have said something else. Well, if he did, I don't remember. You must remember. A fortune. He hid a fortune somewhere in this room. It has to be in this room. But where? Search for days. I can't find it. Searched? You mean in your dream? The only dream I've had is to be rich. And I've worked too hard at it to be cheated now. A dream. No, this is real. He had money, a lot of money, and it's hidden in this room somewhere. And you know where. You were up there watching the night he hid it. Oh, no, no, that was just a dream. You woke in your sleep. You stumbled down that secret door, just like I did a few weeks back. Sure, it felt like a dream, but what you saw was real. You described it accurately. Detail by detail. <gasps> Esme, are you sorry, Marty? All right. I heard you telling that student fellow. And we need to know. I want that money. I saw a man die. Murdered. That's right. That's exactly right. Oh. You see, you do remember. Ian, it's supposed to look like a fall down the stairs. We agree. By the time it's all over, we'll be long gone, and there's room in that cupboard for two. You better start remembering, sweetheart. The key is locked away in your mind, and I'm prepared to carve it out if I have to. No, I, I've told you all I know. You have to try harder. No! No one will hear. You're not down here, and we've got the whole night ahead of us. I've been here since I left you this morning. I found the body. Stabbed, like you said. So? I sat down and thought. Had to be an inside job. Someone in your household to get him into the attic room and through to here. I settled for Esme. Esme has a boyfriend. He works as a waiter. They all wear 19th century costume. He came over here between shifts, killed him and went back and carried on working. If he'd have been a God-fearing man, he might have got away with it. Open the Bible. Kissing his fingers. He was sticking stamps onto a page. But not just any old stamps. Rare, highly prized stamps. There must be close on half a million stuck to that page.
A page. But not just any old stamps. Rare, highly prized stamps. There must be close on half a million stuck to that page. <laughs>